the Sherman tank build continues. All right, so here's what I got today. Um, there you see a mock-up of a new front drive transmission setup. There's the old uh, bicycle transmission that I took off and set to the side. And now I get this set up. So first, a little bit about tank steering. It's a pretty complicated thing. I know of about seven schemes they come up with through World War II, uh, differential braking, clutch braking, control differential or cleat track, which is what the Sherman tanks used, uh, double differential, triple differential, Maybach triple differential, which is unique to the uh, Panther, and dual drive, which is where each track has its own complete and independent transmission and engine in the back. So this setup is none of those. <laughs> so I may be asking for trouble trying something new, but it's the idea I came up with once I bought a lawn tractor and saw how they actually work. Um, I ended up, once I bought one and saw how they work, I thought, okay, I need two. So I bought a second one, bought one for a hundred, bought another for 80. So far I've sold $80 worth of parts off of them. So I think I'll be able to sell a few more things and maybe come out even on that. It cost me nothing. But anyway, so I got two different lawn riding lawnmower transaxles there one for each track as you can see and these these have a um, forward and reverse gear selector there's a, a small disc brake on the on there you can see on the side you can, maybe you can see this one a little better down here a little disc and uh, and then a giant pulley on top and that's it all the axles do is have uh, forward reverse and brakes and then a differential inside, which of course I had to open these up and weld those differentials so they can't turn. Otherwise, all the power would just go to these center axles and tank would move. So the differentials are both welded. So all the power will go to the uh, the wheels on the outsides, which will have by, uh, sprockets attached to them, of course. Um, but the way we're going to steer it, first a little bit about how the, the lawn tractor worked. The MDT tractor had this variable pulley stack which goes here, and maybe you can see better this way. So there's there's two pulleys stacked together, and the top pulley would go to the, uh, to the pulley on top of the rear axle, and the bottom pulley would come up to the engine. And in this position, the engine pulley, the belt would have to ride all the way out here at the outer edge of the pulley, and the axle belt would come all the way to the inner diameter of the pulley, so you get about a two to one gear reduction. The engine or the axle is spinning at half the speed of the engine. And then just by changing the position of this pulley, this gradually slides up. And what that does is the, the belt from the engine can, can come all the way down here and the belt to the rear axle gets pushed all the way out to the outer edge here. And now you've got an overdrive of two to one. So the, the rear axle goes from spinning half the speed of the engine to twice the speed of the engine, just by changing the position of this center plate. And the, in the tractor, there was just a clutch pedal and a gear selector, which worked together to change to six or seven discrete positions of this pulley so that it acted like a seven speed gearbox, but in fact, it's a continuously variable transmission. So I'm gonna have one variable stack pulley for this track, another one kind of down here, can't really see it there for this track and then they'll both go to a vertical shaft I'll mount in the center I'll have a pulley going to one track a pulley going to the other track and at the bottom I'll have a pulley for the uh, engine so I'll have a, a belt running all the way along the floor to the back of the tank where the engine will be way there in the back so that's my idea of how this is gonna work um, let me know what you think if you think I got any major flaws with the concept, got any other ideas or things that I might might not work. Um, you may notice this, the, the one axle is upside down, but these axles are filled with grease, solid grease, not oil, so gravity isn't a problem with getting lubrication, so I was able to mount that one upside down. Um, but uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of how it's progressing. Um, all right, thanks for watching.